Good morning. It is May the 4th. Be with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yesterday uh, in uh, Pastor Randy's message, he was talking about inviting. And one of the things he was talking about, he was talking about problem people. Uh, people go from church to church and they cause the problems at this church and they go to another church and you know cause problems there and then you go to another church. And he was talking about pastors who um, have these people um, who have these people come to their church and they're like yes I'll be able to I'll be able to save this person even though or, you know save this person even though you know everywhere they go they're disgruntled everywhere they go they gossip about people you know and then they gossip about people to the people that they gossip and then they gossip about those people and and how these people are like never satisfied and how they go um, from church to church and how some pastors think that they're going to be able to just you know somehow um, allow them in without having encouraging them to resolve their issues or anything and that they'll somehow be able to just carry it through this and um, uh, and all that and it really got me thinking um, if if somebody's going to make a problem well let, let me say this first so okay so the pastors who accept these people they don't realize that that they're going to make problems for them too and they don't realize that uh, people don't realize that if someone gossips to you they're going to they're going to gossip about you you know oh no we're close we have this bond i'm just this you know, I'm I, I I'm a sounding board for them. I I hope that it, it doesn't work like that. People people are either working on growing and maturing and controlling the things that they say, or they're like a loose cannon, like a faucet. They just kind of flow. Um, and here's here's the thing that got me thinking with yesterday. It's not just pastors that do this. People do it too. And when pastor was talking about that, it kind of just like. Wow, I, I've done that before. I've seen other people do that before, where we think, I can save this person. I can change them. Even though they're dissatisfied with everybody that they go to, they, they, they've burned bridges with everyone that, that they've been in contact with. Every relationship they've ever had has ended poorly. Um, you know, they always have bad things to say about everyone, especially their authority figures, be it fathers, be it um, pastors, be it uh, politicians, whatever. They have something bad to say about every authority figure in their life. They, every relationship that they've been, that they've been in, you know, has, has been disastrous. But then we come along and we say, you know what? No, I can fix this. I, 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 can, I, I can save this person. I can change them. You see it happen with people who get in relationships too. Oh, you know, they're really a nice person, but I can change them. Well, I, 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 I love the optimism and the enthusiasm, but that's not really actually how it goes. It more of just wears you down and it changes you and it hurts you. And then it makes it makes you where you're callous, where you don't help those people who, who actually do want help and who actually um, are willing to change. And... So that we, we got kind of this idea of I will be the mediator. I will lend my ear and I will be able to mediate this problem. And, and we go in with it very naive. We approach it very, very, very naive. We say something like this. Okay, so this person is has, having a problem with this person. But you know what? I can step in and I can change things. And I can make it where... Um, you know, I can rectify these two people, but we don't do it for the sake of rectification. We don't do it for the sake of restoration. We do it like this. I, oh yeah, tell me all your gossip. Tell me all the ways that this person has hurt you. Okay, then we, now, now we have a biased review and we say, okay, you did this and this and this and you're just a piece of trash. You're, you did, 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 did. You'd be surprised how often this happens. And you may say, oh, I'll never, I would never do that. You would be surprised. Oftentimes we, we do stupid stuff like this. We don't even realize that we're doing it. Um, you, you know, and then you get called things like, oh, you're just, you're just, you know, this bigot and stuff. And you're like, whoa, whoa, what are we talking about? And then it turns out that somebody who you were trying to help, 
who it didn't go well, went to someone else and told them a sob story about how you wronged them, and so now they're on their side, and you've got this whole army against you, and you're like, whoa, that's not what happened. And the danger is in not finding out the truth, but rather thinking that you can fix it. I, I, I can be this person's savior. They were just wronged. They are the, they are the, um, the victim in this. And you go into this with, with, with your mind already made up that this person is 100% right and the other person is 100% wrong, even though you have no idea what's going on because you see yourself as a mediator, you see yourself as a savior of the situation, and it just does not end well. It never ends well. I mean, once again, the enthusiasm is great, but the follow-through is just terrible. And... Um, <laughs> We get this idea. You know what? You just didn't handle it right. That's why the situation blew up. It, no, no, no. Oftentimes what happens is the person is just disgruntled and they're not willing to change. And there's only so much help you can offer to someone who doesn't want to change. I mean, we here's an example. We work a lot with, with drug addicts. And you, you, you can try and help and everything, but there has to be a point where the addict admits to themselves, I need to change, and I need help to change. And before they before they reach that point, you, you really can't do much. I mean, you can yell at them. That's not going to accomplish anything, but you can do it. You can look down on them and make fun of them. It's not going to do anything, but you can do it. And uh, so you, we just kind of get this idea that you just didn't handle it right. If I would have been in that situation, I could have fixed it. And just here, here's the problem, just the level of arrogance involved in that. Yeah, you know what, Pastor? You handled that person wrong. It's all your fault, but I can fix them. And then you start believing things about the pastor, and you start treating the pastor differently, and you start siding against the pastor with someone that you don't even know the whole story. And it's not just with pastors. It's with other people, too. You know, oh, this person, there are no good, this and that, and I worked with them, and did, and they were my boss, and they were just so unfair, and you get all these sob stories, and here's the thing, these sob stories sound freaking fantastic if you only have one side of it. I mean, just imagine this, you are creating a fictional story, and you're spinning it and making yourself the victim in this big wrong thing. We all love the underdog, so we make ourselves the underdog. Well, the only problem with that is you have invented a story, and it's not the real thing. And so I want to warn you against being arrogant. Don't think, oh, I can go in and I can fix this person. They've been this way for 30 or 80 or 70 years or whatever, but I can fix them single-handedly. And it's just everybody else that was doing it wrong and they weren't understanding. And it's, eh, be careful about these kinds of things. Um, it will not go well and they will turn on you eventually. And uh, so just a few things here. First off, be careful about believing gossip. When somebody tells you a story that's, I mean, too good to be true, it's just, oh, you were so wronged. It probably isn't true. Very rarely will you find somebody being 100% the victim. I mean, yeah, it hypothetically could happen, you know. I, I, I can think of a few situations like, I don't know, Jesus or uh, Joseph in the book of Genesis, where, where, well, even he wasn't, I mean, he kind of egged it on. But anyways, the, the, I, you, you get what I'm saying. Most of the time, it's like, yeah, this story is a little bit too slanted in your favor. Um, um, and then another thing, not just be careful about believing gossip, but then another thing is be careful about arrogance. I can fix this person. I can fix this situation. You're just an idiot. You just handled it wrong. You didn't listen. You didn't do a good job. Did, did, okay, all right. It's really easy to say what everybody else said wrong when you weren't the one in the situation. And I've been on both sides of that one. Uh, and then the last thing, um, I guess there's two more things. First off, be careful about getting sucked in. Just like fear kind of gets going and people just kind of get sucked in. If one person gets afraid of something, then I mean it just spreads like wildfire. And pretty soon you're living in a culture of fear where everybody's scared of something. And, you know, then even little things. And then you start looking for things to be scared of. It's the exact same thing with getting sucked into gossip and people who are negative all the time and complaining all the time and are never thankful and those kinds of things. I mean, you can move heaven and heaven and earth and hell and everything in between and... It just it just is never good enough for some people, and you you have to you have to admit that, and then you have to just deal with it and don't get bitter, forgive them, 
and do the best you can and uh, know that there's always a point when you have to say, well, there's nothing I can do. Um, and then the last thing is, is be careful about getting betrayed. When somebody is dis dissatisfied, they're disgruntled, and they've gone from situation to situation, you know, left all these wrecks behind them, and then you go in with this attitude of, I'm going to fix them. Eventually, it won't work well. Eventually, they will betray you. And here's the thing. You can't put your trust in just everybody. Trust has to be earned. And if you just blindly trust and believe someone based on nothing, you're going to make yourself enemies based on false information. And it's going to affect the way you deal with people and the way you deal with things. And I just want to end with this kind of a, a pondering here. Do you think that Jesus would have done something similar to that? And if you can honestly say, yes, I believe that Jesus would sit around listening to gossip and then take a bad attitude towards someone else that he doesn't even know the situation, you're fooling yourself. Like, yeah. So just, just think about that. What, what would Jesus do in this situation? First off, he probably wouldn't listen to the gossip. Second off, he, <laughs> he wouldn't walk into the situation with this whole arrogant, you know, rooster attitude. You know, imagine this, that we act more prideful than Jesus himself, and Jesus was God. And Jesus acted more humble than we act when we walk into... I mean, that just blows my mind away. So I, I, I hope that this was something for you to think about. Once again, I, this is kind of building on Pastor's message from yesterday. If you didn't get a chance to listen to it, it is available um, on our Facebook page. Um, and if you're watching this video, you can get to our Facebook page. And it's called Inviting. Um, he was talking specifically about my enemies. Uh, highly encourage you to watch that. It's on. Um, it's it was from yesterday morning. So if you go to our Facebook page and you click on videos, it'll be called Inviting Part One. Um, thank you for watching and uh, have a great, uh, great day. And Chuck, or no, no, not Chuck. Uh, Pastor Randy will have a very encouraging word for you guys tomorrow about something that we are all dealing with. Um, he told me what it'll be on, so I, I'm very, very much looking forward to that. So you guys have a great rest of the day.